out of all the myriad things that i have done in my life the one thing that has given me the most joy is being a father uh, to my son the day i became a parent uh, there was a switch within me that just flipped something that i've always cherished and uh, to be honest uh, there are no thoughts it just comes as naturally as it can <laughs> Hello and welcome to Sisterhood with me Shelly Chopra. The spotlight on this episode is on Father's Day. Why? Because I wonder if there is a concept called father's guilt. How is parenting changing in our world with fathers taking equal charge and in some cases even more? What is going on in their mind and how are they managing to balance what is work life, emotions, baggage, relationships, all of that put together? I've got three dads on the show. I'll start by introducing them. Mihir Joshi, who runs his own radio show, is a singer, has had a BAFTA nomination, talks about his journey with his son Neil. From uh, from being a single dad uh, to one who has got a really busy schedule as a lawyer is Karthikeya Tana, who joins me. He has a young daughter of 10 who's now got all kind of questions about life. How is Karthikeya dealing with his journey as an author lawyer to one where it's time for him to talk about puberty, sex relationships with his young daughter of 10? With me is also Priyank, uh, who runs a very significantly busy life coach business. He gets people fit and on track. With a boy who's still getting things around and a toddler, how is he understanding his son's needs and perhaps getting him to raise as a feminist man? All of those conversations are in spotlight here at Sisterhood with me, Shelley. I'm going to start with you, Kartikya. Your journey as a single dad. Um, I think parenting, um, the day I became a parent, uh, there was a switch within me that just flipped. Uh, you know, before that, I was you know, kind of nonchalant living my life, you know, wanting to succeed, ambition. I, I mean, I still want to succeed, but you know, what, what that flipped within me was the real ability to nurture and care for this really little tiny human that was just born. And as soon as she got out of the hospital, uh, you know, I held her in my arms and that is when that switch flipped within me. So what that did was it no longer felt like a responsibility because before that, you know, I used to discuss with my wife, now my late wife, um, that, um, you know, you handle this, I'll handle this, you know, I, I don't want to do this, I don't want to do that. There were some examples, you know, um, and because it felt like a responsibility before I became a parent. But as soon as I became a parent, as soon as I held my daughter in my arms, everything just dissolved from responsibility into just love and affection. Priyank, uh, fatherhood comes with different responsibilities. So we're so used to hearing about the work-life balance that women strive as mothers. But you tell us how is your entire effort to try and strike a balance with you working, your wife working, and both of you broadly in the same health space. How is that shaped up? My wife, we both work together and we share a lot of responsibilities together. And the same goes in the house as well. You know, uh, when it comes to parenting, when it comes to doing things at home, there has never been any sort of, uh, you know, uh, uh, differenti differentiation or distinguishing factor. We both share responsibilities equally. One thing that we definitely do is that we have a lot and lot of conversations. We talk a lot about it. There are days where, you know, we kind of both are tired, kind of both exhausting, exhausted, but having a lot of conversation and making sure that you communicate everything that you have in your mind with a partner helps a lot. Your lives are just as hectic, uh, Mihir. Uh, I, I, I can't forget how often I'm asked the question, multitasking as a woman and a mother, how does that put you against um, the idea of motherhood? So let me ask you that. Multitasking as a dad, how do you manage being dad? So, you know, uh, from the very start, we believed in equal parenting. I mean, I've literally done everything for Neil, just like my wife Neha has, you know, from changing, I mean, apart from feeding him, that's the one part which I couldn't really help with. But then what I would do is I would support her, you know, ensure that she got everything that she needed to do when she was feeding Neil and he was exclusively breastfed for six months. And for the first one year, that was his primary source of, uh, you know, uh, food. So I'd make it a point that, I could support my wife and give her everything that she needed to be able to do that. So I've actually, in my way, I think that's what dads should be doing for their 
uh, wives uh, for their you know for the mothers of their babies uh, you know figure out a way to support their breastfeeding journey for as long as possible so i did that but apart from that changing diapers bathing him uh, you know taking him for walks putting him in a carrier uh, you know putting him to sleep uh, even now i mean when he's around four and a half years old most often when i'm at home i'm the one putting him to sleep uh, in the morning waking up putting you know getting him ready getting him bathed getting him to school so you know it's always been a a, a journey of equal parenting for for both of us Kartikeya, I'm coming back to you to just deep dive into what kind of conversations uh, do you have with your daughter, and uh, particularly, you know, how complex and emotional is that piece of being a dad um, and navigating that as a single parent. You have to be very considerate and very sensitive, but at the same time, you cannot yield to everything that you know they uh, they would like to be. Um, you know made comfortable with so that's one of the conversations that we have had even in school for example you know if she hasn't done well if she hasn't understood a particular thing and you know she is very tempted to give up uh, because it doesn't count in the overall scheme of things and i tell her that you know why did you give up uh, you know why is it something that you cannot understand you cannot resolve and i do spend time with her to try to explain to her these concepts uh, for example fractions and divisions you know in the way that she understands um, so i try to devote that time me here we are not only having a dad special here two out of three dads here are raising boys now that is a very special journey because it requires a completely different bone in our world today to raise feminist sons how are you making an effort in that direction all we try to do with neil uh, is without getting into terminology we just treat, you know we teach him through action through our own actions and through the way he behaves with everybody at this age as well whether it's his friends whether it's the people who come and work at our home whether it's people on the road whether it's his grandparents his aunts his uncles whoever we teach him to be a good person you know uh, and i think the rest will figure its way out as he grows older uh, and the most important thing that we've always kept uh, is that lines of communication are always open he knows he can come and talk to me or he can talk to neha about literally anything and uh, I, i see that even at this age he's comfortable enough to just come and speak his mind share his thoughts you know if something bothers him something scares him if he's you know you know if he's experiencing something new he feels comfortable enough to come and talk about it with us so you know whenever questions arise about anything we will be there to answer them and we'll ensure that like i said our main thing is to teach him to be a good human being and if he does that everything else will get sorted out i believe me here uh, at the very core of things you know values shouldn't change because values are values whether boy girl or any other gender uh, in terms of having a, an offspring but what are the core values you're defining for your child and how early are you having those conversations so you know one of the things that we've always told him is be open to experiencing new things like you know uh, it's okay to be scared of things but discuss it with us if it is a legitimate fear we will tell you how to deal with that if it's an illogical fear we'll tell you how to deal with that somehow managed to teach him the importance of self preservation as well uh you know figuring out how to keep himself safe no matter where he goes uh be kind to people something as simple as we tell him along the, you know something along the lines like when you walk out of the house uh if uh, the security guard of your building says hi to you please say hi back uh if somebody smiles at you please smile back you know simple things like that uh, politeness decency courtesy uh you know uh patience which is something that even us as adults struggle with you know we always try to tell him little by little to have a little more patience when we see him running around doing uh, uh you know being as hyper as he is which is understandable for four and a half uh, but we still try to you know bring those values in and we don't expect it to happen overnight i mean i don't expect him and i am never expect him to be a perfect child i'm not worried about marks and this and that we just want him to be a happy child and be a good person like i said you know in my earlier my last answer as well that's the most important thing on that path of being a good human being what are the things that you need to uh, figure out learn 
and it's it's a constantly evolving process i mean at my at the age of 42 i'm still learning new things and he's learning new things at four and a half he's just got a lot more things to learn and it's beautiful that you know he gets to experience all of those things kartikeya what is that one skill you realize every dad needs to have the the ability to nurture and to care you know what i believe in is what i've learned from even books and you know wise people who've written these books is um in in hinduism in sanskrit we have shiv and shakti you know the divine masculine and divine divine feminine energy within us and and we we all have it you know in equal measure it's just that because of societal constructs and because of the way we've lived our lives certain energies are more um you know readily accessible and other energies have been kind of pushed behind but men also have equal amount of you know feminine energy within them which is you know to nurture to care to to be sensitive i think that has to be tapped into when you have a child which Uh, and and you, when you're a single dad, uh, because you can't just relegate that role, or you can't just uh, outsource that role to a woman figure in uh, your child's life. Um, you know, in my case, her mother is not alive. That doesn't mean she doesn't have you know female figure. She does. You know, her grandmother. But despite that, you know, for her, I'm going to be her immediate parent. So that I think is one important skill that a, a man should develop, a single father should develop. I'm coming to you Priyank uh, trying to understand you know we we all say this to women she needs to be a superwoman you know the cool mom how are you dealing with the pressure of being a cool dad um do people raise that with you I just want to be myself I don't want to really take that pressure in that sense that I want to get everything right I I can you know I'm I'm uh because that will put an unwanted pressure on him to be maybe you know get uh somewhere where my dad is already you know he does everything right he's the super cool dad you know he ticks all the boxes so i don't want him to be under that pressure i want him to learn that life is not a straight line it can go up and down any time kartikeya what has the experience of being a dad a single dad taught you about your own self Honestly, and I know it might sound like an exaggeration, but everything that I do uh, with regard to her is just pure love and responsibility. Yes, does it get um, overwhelming at times? Yes, it does. Um, and and you know that that there is frustration in uh, other parts of my life that does boil over to parenting. And and I hope I, I've, over the years I've become a more conscious parent. So I hope that you know whatever is going on in my life. whatever other frustrations or anger or despair or helplessness has gone on in other aspects of my life doesn't come into my parenting and most most likely more more often than not it is uh, just a beautiful relationship between her and me and i think we feed off each other's energy where she also understands and realizes that you know she only has her father um and and you know for me she is just someone that I felt ready to nurture and care for and and also um you know cultivate um her and empower her you know in whatever way she wants to go ahead in life me here what have been the big surprises that um parenting has brought to you have you had to face the mirror for something you didn't gear up for or weren't prepared for you know one of the things that i'm most surprised by is his uh, uh, his genuine curiosity and intelligence about things uh, i'll give you an example you know i'm sitting in front of a wall of sneakers uh, as you can see i do a lot of sneaker related content so i do things like unboxing uh, sneakers when they come to me and i talk about them so at the very start of my sneaker content creation journey i had opened a box and i was about to, so i had a camera in front of me just like this i was about to start recording and the moment i opened my box he came running and he wanted to see what's in it it was his genuine curiosity so i could have dealt with it in two ways i could have told my wife like hey man i'm shooting can you keep him aside for a little while but i could see how excited he was so i put him on my lap and i said okay have a look and i kept the camera rolling and it became a thing where he fell in love with it and the thing is he doesn't have social media so he's not doing it for the likes or the views he's doing it because it's a fun experience for him to sit with his father 
look at new sneakers and talk about new sneakers so you know he, when he we started he could barely talk like he was not really talking talking but now he have his thoughts like the moment i open a new sneaker he'll talk about oh i like this about this uh, these are really uh, cool aspects of it i like the fact that it has got multiple laces so he's now almost become like a co-host on my sneaker shows but he has no idea where it goes what happens with it who's watching it what are the comments that are coming under it he's doing it for the pure joy of spending that time with me and you know that's that's what i love about him his his curiosity his uh, intelligence when i say that he can name like over 100 cars he can name every sneaker i have in my collection his his joy for geography is unbelievable of course we helped him with all of that so you know when he when he showed a little bit of interest with puzzles we got him a puzzle of an india map then he could fit all the states in and we said okay let's go beyond that let's get asia let's get the world and it's come to a point right now in where he can look at the shape of a country and tell you what the name of the country so these are things which blow my mind i still can't do some of the things that he can do at four and a half years old i mean he can identify like i said over 100 cars on the road when we are driving on the road he's in his car seat so it's a little elevated he's constantly looking outside the car and checking out oh now this has come and now he's come to a point where he'll be like oh this is the first generation kia oh this is the second generation kia you know the logo on this has changed it just blows my mind it's such a joy to see uh how he has reacted to uh, you know the, the things that we've been able to offer him priyank uh with your young son do you cry in front of him and what's the general thinking about being so expressive in front of your child how do you think about that because a lot of the times we are raised to believe that you should hold back tears hold back feelings how are you doing it uh initially you know before my child i never thought you know uh, crying didn't really come naturally to me uh, i mean i've cried a couple of times it kind of make me feel slight to be honest but uh with him i can't hold myself back to anything just to anything he brings out the emotional side of me absolutely he brings me to my bare minimum So yes I have shed a couple of tears here and there maybe I I can't like think of it so hard but I I I've never restricted myself in front of him in what so manner ever I've always been what I am bare minimum absolutely out there So Karthik has started the introduction to this show talking about is there a thing called father's guilt let me ask you that question I did suffer from guilt. I was uh, a very anxious, overcompensating parent, mostly out of guilt because I was working. You know, I, I had to be the. I was the sole breadwinner. I wanted to be the breadwinner. Um, and you know, as a man, you know, you want to develop your career. Um, so I wasn't able to. And I was in the field of law. I'm. I am in the field of law. But at that time, I was working at a law firm, and you know, the hours were grueling, and I wasn't able to spend a lot of time with her. Um, and therefore she would often sleep you know at her grandparents place and then i would basically just you know end up living like a bachelor in a sense you know after i would come back from work you know late in the night and yes there was quite a lot of guilt which resulted in a lot of overcompensation as a parent which i then you know realized uh, a couple of years down the line that you know this is the pattern that's happening so yes there is something called a father's guilt but i think uh, if you don't try to compete with you know the mother if if the mother is alive but even if the mother is not alive you don't try to put yourself as the child's mother because as a father you'll never be the mother and the mother is the more important parent let's not you know let's not be have any illusions about it so it's pointless to compete with that role but at least if you're able to tap into your like i said sensitive side you know the divine feminine energy within you you're able to really um get rid of you know a lot of things that you would do that which would then put you into that guilt mode Mihir Joshi would you agree with what Karthikeya is talking uh, about in terms of just the just the strain on now uh, on your mind and, and perhaps even your heart on how do you navigate fatherhood and parenting and what it brings with it you know maybe uh, i have not felt it that much because again like i said i am fortunate that i get to do a job where there is a genuine balance between work and family like i get to spend a lot of time at home um and i don't maybe it's because i don't think as much as i do 
uh, I'm, I'm a very simple person that way you know I, I, I live in the moment I enjoy the moment and I try to do uh, whatever I can to uh, be present in that moment so there is no time for guilt and uh, you know uh, regrets and things like that so I haven't personally felt it, but I know what you're talking about. And like I said, I am fortunate that I don't have to go through that. So as we talk and navigate emotions here on Sisterhood with Shelly with this dad special, Priyanka, I want to come back and talk to you about self-care. You know, I am a huge advocate of women saying I can only do that much. And beyond that is just taking a very big toll on me. I suppose it would be fair to ask uh, that as men, are you drawing the line? Do you do you take out certain amount of time where you want to rejuvenate as dads, not just as individuals? You know, there's a rethink on what you're doing, how much you want to take on, so on and so forth. Dad and self care. Uh, I think uh, I've I've really been uh, 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 trying to stay fit only so that I can be relevant when he grows up. Only so that I can do a lot of things. Uh, I can be a lot more you know energetic and because i want to explore the life through his eyes uh to be very honest uh with him i'm reliving my childhood all over again but with so many new things around me which we did not have before and to keep doing that i want to stay fit so this comes naturally to me and this is one of the biggest motivations that you know uh, everyone should have as uh, you know parents not that you want to provide them a lot children don't really need a lot until you force them to have a lot so they want a parent who's who's always there who's energetic who is fresh and available for them so that's my biggest motivation to stay fit and it comes easily to me for that me here how do you look at this uh, if you were to look back in the you know let's say a few years and do something differently as a dad what would you pick you know uh, i again uh, not too many regrets uh, i've been able to spend a lot of time a lot of quality time with my son uh, i'm sure there are things that i could have done better i'm sure that there, there are things that i could have you know you always want to provide for your kids right you want to give them the best possible life you want to give them the uh, best possible things that they can enjoy in their life but that again is a constantly evolving process i mean there is no at no point of time is any human being satisfied with what they have they always want more but uh, i feel that while you may want more and that's a natural and a good thing to aspire for more i think contentment with what you have is very important as well so i think i've been fairly content with the time that i've got to spend with my son kartikeya what about you uh, would you say that you have a certain kind of advice for dads or even single dads specifically um <laughs> Well, obviously to learn how to cook, uh, because, you know, homemade food, cooked food is always nutritious, you know, you, you can't rely on outside food. Uh, you never know, you know, what the health quantity are, but uh, uh, what the health parameters are. But um, other than that, I think um, the, the ability to nurture and to care. All right, I'm going to give the last word to Mihir. Mihir, parenting in one word for you. Um, satisfying you know it's genuinely the most satisfying experience of your life like you know uh, i'll give you i'll give you an analogy if you if you watch a movie that really makes you happy you know put, runs you through the gamut of emotions it makes you happy it makes you sad um, there are exhilarating moments in it there are scary moments in it but at the end of it all you know when you finish watching that movie you feel like oh wow that was a great right like that that whole experience was fantastic i really enjoyed that that's when you feel satisfied when you walk out of a theater or you know if you're watching it at home on a computer you know on your tv screen or whatever you feel satisfied i think satisfaction is the word that comes closest to the experience of parenting that if you do the right things and again you know when you watch a movie uh continuing with that analogy you choose which movie you want to go into right like you you probably thought about it you probably watched the trailer you probably done a little bit of research before you go in so you plan for it and then you go in and then hope that everything that you have planned for or that you've seen or that you've read about gives you that satisfying result so you know you put in the work behind it 
to begin with and that's exactly what parenting is you put in the work uh you spend the time with your child uh and hopefully it is satisfying uh, for us so far it has been incredibly satisfying it has been incredibly joyous so uh that for me is how i would define parenting well thank you very much all of you for joining us here on sisterhood with me shelly chopra for this dad special uh it's just been wonderful talking to you all and sort of living through a bit of your experience uh, so thanks for sharing those with all the various dads watching this or to be dads uh so that you all can gear up and most importantly take those important notes on the fact that we all need to raise our children differently and gear them up for a much more equal much more diverse world than we have ourselves seen see you again here on youtube with another episode of sisterhood with me shelly coming soon every week don't forget to press the bell icon and subscribe to our channel stay tuned for much more